All righty, Mr. Torbati, how you doing, sir? What's up, everybody? I'm great. Cool, cool. All right, um, so some of y'all are asking what the hell are we doing right now? Uh, we're picking up where we left off. Um, I started the podcast journey last year, the year before last, by myself, and then Simeon Panda came on for the ride, and he's still on the ride, but um, you know, we all live in different parts of the state, and um, I'm here with my brother, Sean Torbati, every day. So, uh, you know, the hosts will be interchangeable, I guess, yeah. to an extent. Yeah, we. I mean, we want to have this going because people have a constant influx of topics they want to hear yours or our input on. And so we're talking about them anyway, exactly. every day. Exactly. So we may as well record those thoughts and put them out into the world and share them with everyone. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the return. With no theme music, no logo. We got a logo. We're going to have all that. No theme music yet. The room is still bare. We're working on it. Lions, owls, and elephants. All right, so Sean, let's dive right into it. Okay. Neuralink. For those who don't know what Neuralink is about, Elon Musk, our guy, the homie, he sent me a text this morning. He didn't really text me, but, you know, he did an announcement yesterday or today uh, about... Neuralink, that it's a thing. It's really coming. Uh, they're in motion. Um, for those who don't know what it is, it is pretty much in the next evolution of, of of humans. This is, I've always felt like transhumanism, the merging of man and machine, would be the next evolution of mankind, right? And it's right here in front of us. Look, typically it takes evolution millions of years. But now with the advent of technology, Everything happens faster and faster and faster and faster. So Neuralink, the, 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 we have the reptilian part of our brain, the very basic fucking instinctual part, and then the limbic system. And now Neuralink will be this interface, which I think would be a chip implanted in our brain, which is an interface to connect us to artificial intelligence. What do you think about that? I mean, I agree with you completely. I think this is inevitable. It's it is the next evolutionary step. There's a quote that we'll look up in a minute here, but it's the gist of it is that man will not be content with what he's been given. Ever. He will find a way to continue to adapt and evolve. That's one of the essences of humanity. It's partially for survival, but partially just our desire to, to change things and to improve them. That's what we do. That's why we've gotten to this point as a species. Um, and this is the most obvious step. We've built this technology that allows us to access information instantaneously right here. We can know anything. Right. Actual straight knowledge is not even relevant anymore. It's this, application. This literally is part of our biology to an, to, an, to an extent. I mean, it's really slow for us to access it compared to what Neuralink could do. But this is part of who we are, our phones. This our tool access. this tool's available to us yeah. to learn whatever we want as fast as we want, and not mm -hmm. just through the phone, but right. computers or any form right. of technology. So why have that barrier of having to actually pick up your phone or go to your computer, right. whereas now you can just do it instantly? I mean, the, the knowledge that is contained in these things is, is already, it's already, it was already there too. Mm -hmm. But then you had to go to the library. Right. You had to get encyclopedias. You had to do all these things to access the info. So it was a huge barrier to entry. Right. And it's funny, you know, people, a lot of people get real nostalgic about books, right? And like, you know, just got to read a book, like hold the book, read the book. I get it. But at the same time, this is not, we're not in a situation to where that's all we have. I mean, if you want to be like that, let's say, oh, well, we got to translate Sanskrit off of tablets, off of, or, or hieroglyphics off of papyrus. You know what I mean? People are romantic about the old school shit, which I get it. I, I, I dig it, you know, but it sets a foundation. Every time a civilization comes and leaves, it's here. The next one gets to build on top of that. That's normal, right? So now we're at a situation to where we have fucking information in the airwaves. You know what I'm saying? We can get it like that. You know, you remember when the cell phones first came out? That shit wasn't the same. Like, it, can you imagine back in the '90s thinking that you could send video to somebody through a phone? Oh man, you Hold would. On. You would go imagine back it. to the '80s when you had to have a cord. You mean I could have a? Remember cordless phones? It was a big deal to be able to Huge go out, deal. outside of your house with it. Yep. Now look at this shit. Now, now it's a matter of how do we make it even faster? Right. How do we make it so that this 
knowledge that this device contains can be used instantly. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're not a fan of that, you're not a fan of progress because right. eliminating these barriers, we only have one lifetime and exactly. it's, it's pretty short. So if we were to be able to waste, uh, eliminate the wasted time that it takes to get to a device or to load a page on the internet or to just get things to find through a Google search, like mm -hmm. if you could just automatically have that in you to be connected to that database yourself, how much faster will we progress? Exactly. Now back to Neuralink, <clears throat> um, what Elon was talking about, his reason for doing it, the first wave of it is supposed to be for people with disabilities, blind, deaf, um, uh, paralysis to restore those functions that they no longer have. But the second wave is to connect us to AI. And this is kind of interesting because he's one of the people that feel like it's inevitable that artificial intelligence can take over. So what do we do? We can't beat them, join them. And that makes perfect fucking sense. And if you think about it, man, like I feel like once we get to a point to where you could download consciousness, there, there won't be life. You, you would just live forever. You know what I mean? What do you think? I think that's, that's going to be yet another big, big step forward is that people have such a short lifespan in the scheme of how long time is. If you were able to actually not have to rely on the next person to come in and pick up where you left off, but just continue working because you weren't a victim of the, the vulnerability of the human condition, the body, right. the mind, and how it fails us, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what, it's going to fail at some point. Right. Your organs and your body, your brain will fall apart on you or you just get hit by a truck. One of those things can happen. It's likely to happen if we could skip that or prevent that or just keep going no matter what, because there's a backup of you or there's a, a working version of you that's right. not reliant on your meat wagon that we're walking around in. We're going to make some crazy advancements. Mm -hmm. This is just be the beginning. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's legit the beginning. You know, it's really interesting, man. I mean, we've been here for a short period of time. You know, mankind as we know it, you know, what, like 100,000 years and only kind of civilized for what, 10,000? So this is really interesting. And it's really interesting to think where we'll be in three, four, five hundred years. I mean, think about it, bro. <laughs> You know how fast technology keeps on uh, uh, advancing. Think about in 50 years how fast it's going to be. I don't think we can even imagine or fathom the type of things that we will discover in 100 years. Like figuring out different ways of physics and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But let me not get ahead of myself, too ahead of myself. I think a lot of people know who you are already. But for those who don't, introduce yourself. Tell them a little bit about your background. I am a nutritionist and a product development specialist. We're partners in Ambrosia. I've been working in dietary supplements in this field of producing high-end products. And I say high-end in a way that I'll define in a minute, but in making really amazing products for the last 10 years. We came together and formed Ambrosia four years ago and really have leveled up at an exponential rate in the last few years, but designing products to help with that human condition I talked about that that the health and wellness of the human body and mind that's what I'm really interested in I started out you know like most of us did working out being inspired by athletes or even some bodybuilders like Arnold uh, one of the first books I read was that encyclopedia that mm -hmm. all of us have seen if you're old enough um, people coming in right now probably won't even ever read that book because They'll be looking at the e books. Yeah. And the Instagrams of people and they won't. Right. That's not the way that they were introduced. But again, we're not I'm not I'm not thinking that the way we did it was better because we just saw kids right now. And we're seeing we're kids now. They're 21 years old. They look amazing. They're strong. They have they have all the knowledge faster. Mm -hmm. What we had to go read in a book, they can now access instantly and they can get the right. best of it, you know, right. right away. And they can learn at an exponential rate and. You know, that's the way it should be. They should right. be passing us up. But right. I started out being interested in getting stronger, getting bigger, looking like mm -hmm. the people I saw in the magazines. But I would say within about five years, I realized, OK, I can get bigger and stronger. But what I'm really interested in is how I can think faster, how I can remember more info, feel better all day. When did you come to this realization? It was when I was in college. I was reading about. Walter Payton, you mm -hmm. know who he is, the running back? He's a Sweetness is his name. He was a running back for the Chicago Bears for the young folk watching this one. 
he was the specimen. Like he was a guy who trained for hours a day. He was notorious for his work ethic. No one could outwork this guy. Mm -hmm. And he used to hold the all-time rushing record in the NFL for a running back, the most yards from scrimmage. Emmett Smith has that record now. He's a guy who was so clean with his diet, so regimented with his training, did his recovery, everything, had an amazing NFL career, got cancer and died. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, I can put all my effort into training uh, a certain way to look, a certain way to perform a certain way, but let me make sure I am doing everything I can to take care of my brain and my insides so that I can perform at a high level for longer. I'm not about trying to have my best be for a competition for the stage or for my 20s and early 30s. I want to be sharp into my 50s, 60s, 70s, and even 80s. Right, but here's the thing, though, to back up a little bit. I think, you know, to have your best for a competition or this or that, I think those things are valuable, too. Super valuable. Know, because, you know, I had a period when I was trying to be the strongest motherfucker on the planet. You know what I mean? So, you know, you have those ferocious lion stages. I tell young people, if they want to do it, do it. Go for it. Know what that feels like. Put Get that notch on your belt. You know what I'm saying? Because what it do, it, it gives you a lot of fucking confidence. You know oh, I think it will build the habits of your life. Exactly. What I want people to know is that you have to do that. You do that. But you don't do that in isolation of taking care of the long-term health markers. Like one thing they weren't doing back then is they weren't getting blood work. Mm -hmm. They weren't monitoring these markers. And I believe if they had, people like... Uh, Walter Payton may have caught things faster, may have mm -hmm. seen them coming, or could have been doing things to prevent them because all the eggs were in that training basket. And if you're elite like he was, he was the best in the world at, mm -hmm. at something, usually that, that comes with a mindset of ignoring a lot of other things because you're really narrowing your focus. Yeah, for sure. For and sure. you have to. You know what, bro? Honestly, I see it like this too. You know, sometimes it's like, what's it worth? You know what I mean? Because we all leaving it in a box, right? So... I feel like for somebody to live on 10 forever, every day, and maybe burn out faster than certain people, die faster than certain people, fuck it. They lived a glorious life. They left behind a legacy, legendary status. You know, because when we get old, it's a lonely road, like, you know, or older. You know, my father and I are very close, you know. We've always been really close, but I noticed is even more now so because I feel like he's outliving all of his friends. So it's just me, you know what I mean, and my sisters. So, but I'm a guy, so he just, we talk about sports and shit like that. So it's like, old age interests me, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's fascinating to think about because I would love to be an old man how I am now, but that's not reality, you know what I'm saying? The body, you know, my father, it, he's, He's 71 years old. He's a young 71. People don't think, they don't believe he's, he's his age. Smooth skin. He barely started getting gray hair recently. Um, he speaks clear. He's got all of his wits about him. And, you know, the body breaks down. When he have injuries, he recovers super fast, right? So, or, or operations, he recovers fast. He does some amazing things. But I do notice he's, he, he's looking older. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, fuck, that's all of our destinies. That's going to be me one day. You know what I mean? So it's like, and God willing, he'll live another 30, 40, 50, not realistic, but whatever, however many years. And it's more and more deterioration. So it's like, hmm, should I check out at 60? Would I be satisfied with 55? You know what I'm saying? As a beast? I mean, look at 55-year-olds now. Look at people like, isn't Michael Hearn... 50? I think he just turned 50, yeah. Or, or uh, Dexter Jackson. Yeah. And Dexter Jackson, think about it. He's 50. Once he retires, which I think may be next year, he gets to take it easy now. And he seems preserved, even to be a bodybuilder. So now he's going to just preserve himself even more. I feel like Dex got another 50 years. People like that. You know he what I mean? definitely it's, could. It's crazy. But it's just something to think about. But uh, anyway, so movement, movement was became something that I was like, OK, there's a lot of there's a lot of emphasis on this right now. Exercise starting in the 80s, 
uh, when Arnold came on the scene, mm-hmm. or not after, like not when he blew up, but when he started becoming an actor and really he was on the presidential council for exercise. Right. Uh, when he really was blowing up the idea of weightlifting, it was catching on. That was something that people were getting. And I wanted to bridge that gap. I found out that, you know, I got ready and I did a natural bodybuilding show. And I realized, oh, the way you eat is really going to change your body. The weight training sets the stage for it to happen. And it does a bunch of other amazing things too, even for your brain. But the food you put in your body is going to dictate how you look Mm -hmm. more than anything. If you put the right stuff in, your body just transforms. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it must have an effect on the way you feel too, mentally. Can you feel better if you eat a certain way? And I became very interested in all of that. So my, my personal nutrition and what I talk about with other people, it's become a balance of trying to maintain that performance and be able to weight train and whatever your type of training is, because you might love hiking, you might love swimming, mm-hmm. whatever it is, um, and be able to be your best and work towards long-term health because The way that, let's say, a traditional bodybuilder would eat um, with five, six, seven large meals per day, spaced out, super high protein, along with other things they do to to make muscle growth happen, it may not be very conducive to long-term health. And I, I would probably say it's not. You have constant digestive distress, right? You have constant and big loads of insulin being secreted to deal with all of that blood sugar. And you really don't get a break from it. The bodybuilders, they, even some of them, if you remember in the 2000s, people were waking up at night to eat. Yeah. They were disturbing their, their mm-hmm. sleep, which would be the normal time for it to all clear out to stay anabolic, right? Mm-hmm. And this is where I was like, okay, there's becoming a, a disconnect where our food intake is going to the extreme of, of a look and um, a desire to become something that is for most people, not even what they're going to be able to do. Most people aren't competing. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be on the Olympia stage. So like finding that balance is something that I really wanted to help people do. And that's what I think we're doing now with our products, with our information, and even with our alpha shred challenge. Right. No, for sure. Even with like, you know, um, for those who don't know, like, uh, I get, this is no bullshit. 90, maybe 80% of what I eat is from trifecta is delivered to me. Right. And I get a la carte or meals. Depending on how I'm feeling, I'll change my orders around. So I don't want my eating to be, I don't want to live to eat. You know what I mean? I want to, I want my food to be just what it is. It's fuel for my body, you know? So, um, so I order, you know, everything that I need a la carte in bulk so I can just easily boom, 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 boom. And, and it's perfect for our lifestyles because you don't want to live to eat. We, and we don't want to eat to live all the time either. We have experiences. We've had them together where we're at a nice restaurant. We have, we have dates where we're hanging out. Yeah. We're having fun. But, but it's like we have, I like to call it money in a bank Mm -hmm. when the majority of our weeks we're eating, we're, we're eating, uh, to, you know, just to sustain us. Right. Then we can afford to have a weekend of whatever, you know, go to a nice restaurant and splurge a little bit. And it speaks to what is going to work nutritionally too. And in any part of your life, consistency and routines is what makes excellence. You can't approach every single meal of every single day as a brand new, uh, obstacle to overcome. Like, what am I going to eat and how is it going to be nutritious? Is it going to have what I need? Is it going to hit my macros? That's why trifecta works so well for, for you, for me and for a lot of other people now Mm. I use it the same way. I just pick what type of food I want to eat. And in my case right now, I'm doing the paleo approach. Mm -hmm. um, And they're giving me the meals that make sense within what type of nutrition I want to do. And they have other choices. And all we just got to do is make sure that we eat it. And all the food tastes great. So you don't got to eat boring food. We've evolved past the the chicken, rice, and broccoli stage. You're getting dishes. You could get it a la carte. That's what I love about it. It's not that. Because most of those companies... These food delivery companies are just ground turkey, rice, and broccoli or asparagus. And it just it tastes terrible. It's not seasoned, you know. So shout out to Trifecta, number one in the business. But um, speaking about Olympia, I want to get into something. Um, Sean Roden, uh, recently there have been allegations about him. um, You know about, I mean, rape. You know, let's call it for what it is, and. it was really interesting the timing because the news came out 
a day or two after we had filmed content with him. He was right? here last Wednesday. Yeah. And the news broke last Friday. Right. 48 hours. So so to put it in perspective, he his people reached out to me like, hey, uh, we want to start promoting Sean's Road to the Olympia. Are you available to do a video? I'm like, for sure. Come on down. So they came on down here. We knocked it out. I wanted to interview him in here, but we was having some technical difficulties. So I just shot him up, like interviewed him while we were working out, asked him uh, some questions. I prefer to have him in here to interview him. But we got what we can get. The next day, boom, we hear this shit. And I'm like, it really fucked my day up. We well, yeah, had just it, got it, to Houston. It affected yeah. me because that allegation is horrendous. If he did it or if he didn't, it's all bad. You know what I mean? The fact that it's out there. If he didn't, it's bad that he has to still shake that off of him. You know what I'm saying? Because... You don't want your name associated when somebody Google you with a rape allegation because it's gonna, people are going to be like, yeah, maybe he did it. They're going to be thinking that. They'll always be the people, even if he is, if he comes out to be free and clean of this, anything other than a video of her saying, I lied, this right. didn't never happen, anything still other than a video doubt. of that, still going to be doubt. People will say, oh, he just got away with it exactly. or whatever. And it will, it's so did. wrong. Yeah. So, but if it did happen, which personally, I don't think so, bro. Um, but if it did, I would feel horrible for her. Just thinking about a man taking advantage of a woman in that way, physically dominating somebody, is not okay at all, right? Thinking about the terror that that person might have uh, endured. Now, listen, I'm not judging nobody. I'm not, you know, I don't know what happened. It is what it is. But I just have a hard time. It just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to tell you a couple reasons why. This happened almost a year ago, okay? Now, apparently, she went to the police back around the time that it happened. I feel like if they had something really solid, they would have arrested him immediately. Okay, so as things went on, it happened. They gave him a call. They say, can we come and uh, talk to you about something? They asked him a few questions, got some DNA samples, and let him go. Now, apparently, what they got the timing is very strange because that was a month after he won the Olympia. Now we're a couple months out from the Olympia and now this is, it comes out. It's very convenient uh, in, in the world of media and publicity for it to come out right now because he's getting ready for the biggest, uh, uh, the Super Bowl of bodybuilding, right? So why now, right? You don't let somebody, the reason for giving somebody a bond is to secure them to make sure they don't leave or harm somebody else. A dangerous society. If they thought he was a dangerous society, he wouldn't have been free for this whole year. You know what I mean? So as our, you know, little bits and pieces come out and the last, the most recent stuff, information that came out from the, uh, from the uh, affidavit was the DNA that was found on her body from him was saliva on her breast. Hmm. That's just weird. I don't know about, I've, I've never heard of people forcing their mouth on somebody's tits. It could happen. I don't know. But that just seems weird. It, it, you know, it seems like, I don't know. And I know people are going to hate me for this, but whatever. It's just, these are thoughts from my head. I don't, I don't understand why she would be in this hotel room and she's married. It's just inappropriate. She came with somebody. She had that person wait downstairs. Bring them up. Bring them up too. It's your mentor or whatever. And that's another thing is motives, right? She's an aspiring bodybuilder or whatever. Here it is, the king of the sport at the time. You get an opportunity of a lifetime to go hang out with him and talk to him or whatever. I don't, for all I know, they could have been flirting before this. I really don't know. I don't know. But whatever it is, I just feel like it's inappropriate. If that was my wife, I would feel a certain way about her going up to this man's room. This powerful man of your industry, the king of your industry, and you want to be in this industry. Yeah, and they talk about him being a mentor to her. Um, and I could see that on an industry or business level, perhaps. I don't know that she 
is of a caliber of competitor that that would even be relevant. Like, it's not like she's a up and coming Olympia competitor that he could like kind of. I think aspiring because I've seen pictures. Okay. I've seen stage shots and all of that. But what I mean is that it's not like she's a, a fellow pro who just needs help from the top of the pros. Right. A, a more suitable mentor for her would be a fellow competitor on the female side. Right. Would be more relevant. Like he's not really right. the one to be judging. He's not a bikini. Her posing, nor is he known as a nutrition or training coach. Right. He, in fact, has both of those himself. So it would be as a business mentor only, really, because it, it can't really be a competition mentor because mm-hmm. he doesn't do that. That's not what he's known for. Right. So it would it would lead you to believe it was of a, of another type of interest, um, which would be okay on his part because they're they're saying at the time, and I don't know the intimate details of that. He was not in a marriage or a relationship. So right. on his end, that would be OK. On her end, obviously not being married and having kids. It would be completely inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, so it leads you to believe that it could be a certain way. But I don't want to I don't want to deny her the right to pursue uh, justice if, if this did happen to her. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. And if she's listening, please, ma'am, we're not trying to throw you under the bus. It's just. I think if she was in our shoes, it would sound weird as well. Yeah. And the truth is weird sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it makes sense from uh, the initial uh, uh, hearing of it. So, you know, I just want the truth to come out and for everybody to be okay. I really hope this didn't happen, though. I really hope it didn't happen. Yeah, and I think anything we're saying is because we we don't want to even have the thought that this did happen because it's so heinous. We we even, I would love to know what, what everyone else thinks, but we actually talked about what's what's the worst things people could do and this is right there yeah it's right there this uh inappropriate things with children and i think planning to murder i think those are the top three you know i'm sure it's some sick twisted minds i could think of something fucking yeah that's pretty much what we came up with that's all we got you know what what do we know but i want to talk about uh, a positive note and how um we can make positive impacts I'm really proud of what we did last weekend in Houston and I want to start to think about how we could and we we mentioned the idea of doing it of making this a part of our lives not not something that happens once a year or when we can but kind of committing to it and letting it take a life of its own the same way as we put effort into our other business ventures mm-hmm. making this effort to positively impact communities giving it a life it already has a name Dirty Angels, mm-hmm. giving it a life and, and allowing it to grow, right. like really, and making it yeah. an effort. So Dirty Angels, the whole concept is, you know, someone who's willing to get dirty, to go in the streets, to do work, uh, and for and with angelic deeds, I, I, I like to say. There's angels, and like, your wife is a nurse. I think she's an angel. You know what I'm saying? She's not my wife yet, but, but you maybe know one I mean. day, yeah. I, I think she'll be happy that I said that right Yeah. <laughs> You're looking for extra bonus points. <laughs> That's the homie. Yeah. She should be on the show. But anyway, nurses are angels. You know, certain teachers are angels. Certain police officers are angels. You know what I mean? People that really care about their job. But anyway, this is our little method, our little. I'm not afraid to go out in the streets and, and be amongst the people. It's really f- interesting to me to be around people that a lot of people don't know exist or don't even fucking care. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. I, I just feel the need to get out there and talk to them, try to help them however I can, you know. And I know that, you know, we, we gave out 300 meals the other night. Um, I know that to homeless people, for those who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, I know that that's not putting a dent or making a huge impact on the issue of homelessness. But what it does is it gives them a meal, right? 300 people got to eat something good, you know what I mean? And also the people that came out to help, I don't know, we had about 60, 70 to 100 people, I'm not sure, but it gave them, it planted a seed in them, the spirit of service, you know, for them to know it's okay to do something nice for somebody outside of themselves with no, re- no reward, no return. That shit is cool and it feels really good. Those people, if you really look at how joy those people were, that shit is addic- it's addicting for me to watch them so excited, so happy. You know, when I first, the first time I did it personally, um, I found out that my dad was, was he was doing the, the, the food lines. He never told me. He was doing it for a year. I had no fucking idea. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? He's like, I was just doing it. 
I was like, this is so fucking cool. So shortly after that, uh, I believe it was Christmas time. We were in Phoenix, Elijah and I, my son. Um, for this particular reason, we were just by ourselves. We made our rounds and then we had nothing else to do. So we planned to um, take a bunch of hoodies from the, uh, the Alpha Academy that were de- defected, stuff that we couldn't sell, and give them out to people because it's cold as shit in Phoenix in the summer, in the winter. So it's a desert. So it's really fucking hot or really fucking cold. So Christmas, we can go, go and give out um, hoodies. So we like, fuck it. We got water. We give water too. And then we went and bought a bunch of like tacos and stuff like that, food. So these people were really appreciative, man. And I mean, we, we went into the areas where we know people would be at. You know, the greyhounds, because they try to go inside for for the warmth. And, you know, I even went down where the prostitutes are at, man, because they, they're cold, they're outside, you know. And it's like this one one woman, you know, she's sitting out on the, on the, on the sidewalk. And I was in my G-Wagon, like, this was my car. So I don't know if she thought I was a pimp, but <laughs> she was, like, scared to come up to the car. And I said, hey. I just I went to the back, got a, got the, uh, some sweaters. I'm like, look, I know it's cold out here. I just want to give you this. I don't want nothing from you. You know what I mean? And she was so appreciative. But it's so it's it's alarming to see people for real in these these lights, these worlds. Um, one guy, he was on a, a, a bus stop, and um, it kind of scared my son because when he got up. It was as if, you know, like a ghost or a wraith just rises, like Dracula just rises. He don't even get up. With his own. He just fucking floats up. That's how, It seemed like that guy did that, right? And his face, bro, oh my God. It was like the accumulation, accumulation of drugs and not eating and being dirty. And he just had this fucking horrific look about him, right? Like Hollywood makeup for a horror movie. And he was tall. You know, he had this big, crazy presence about him. Elijah pulled me he like that. I don't know. I said a million thoughts went through my my head like that, right? So what I what I came up with the analysis was this is okay. He needs to see whatever happens right now. If somebody is going to try to harm me, I need to defend myself. He needs to see that because we don't. I don't want to give him any kind of spirit of fear of anything, and we can be confident because we're trying to do the right thing. Right. I'm not trying to rob this person. I'm trying to give this person something who needs it. So whatever happens, I'm good with it. I'm very confident that I could defend myself. So if I have to beat somebody up, hopefully not. I'm OK with it because I'm trying to do the right thing. That makes sense. And that's important, too, because I don't want anyone to listen to this who might be a young lady or a young kid who may not be as equipped to defend themselves to go out into the, the right. streets or the community alone. Right. I, I, we're not no, advocating no. you do not that. At all. We, you know, Mike is a, is a professional fighter uh, and very, like he said, capable of defending himself. And when we do it, usually it's in a group. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the group setting, it's very unlikely anyone's going to do anything crazy because there's too many people around. And mm-hmm. in general, I would say as much as 99% of the people you'll encounter don't want anything bad. They, they, they are so appreciative. Like, like Mike said, too. yeah, yeah they're, they're not inherently bad people. They're, they're just people. Right. They're in a bad situation. Um, and that's why we're there to, mm-hmm. to help in any way we can, but they're, they're not looking to harm anyone, but there are people out there who may be in this environment right. who might not even be of, of that area. Right. Who are just coming through. Some of them are taking advantage of these people because they right. are selling them some of the drugs they may use or yeah. other things. So be be precautious. Do this mm-hmm. in groups. But you can do this very safely. And I agree a hundred percent. We we don't we don't do fear. We talk about that. We don't we don't live with fear. Whatever it is we're afraid of, we need to go towards that. Exactly. Whatever exactly. you don't want to do, if you feel something, we talk about this all the time. If you feel that you don't want to do something, not because it because of a, a reason of knowing that it's not going to work, but like I feel lazy for this or I feel like this was going to be hard for me. That's what you need to do. That right. is the thing you need to do. And, and Sean, Sean, to tell you guys, every time we have like there's a trip or something that comes up that I just do not. I dread. I don't, I don't want to fucking go. I don't feel like going to the airport. I don't want to. Do, I don't want to do that. I could come up with any reason to pull out and I don't. It ended up being amazing. It ended up being the best trip ever. You know what I mean? It's so. always on the outset. You're looking into the jungle and there's no path cut. Right. It, you know there's going to be some difficulties. It's going to be annoying. We're going to get there at 2 a.m. We have to wake up at 6. We're going to have to like find our way around. We don't know where we are. 
you're looking at the jungle. There's no path cut. LAX. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are difficult, but if you just start moving, you can get through all those things, and whatever's on the other side is usually worth it. Mm -hmm. That's why you thought of it in the first place. Otherwise, you would have never thought of it. Like exactly. whatever the thing is, we're we're gonna get there. Now, one thing, dirty angels to me has a double meaning. Okay, it's talking about being an angel but willing to get dirty. I think it's also for me one thing that it resonated with me, whether you meant it or not, this way is that. We have to acknowledge that we all are flawed. Every one of us, we are trying our best. And I, that's all, I, all we ask from anyone who's around us. We ask it of each other is that we try our motherfucking best. Like your best is good enough. It's what I demand. Like I'll take your best effort if it's truly your best, but you're going to mess up. We all mess up. We all mistake, make, make, make mistakes and none of us are perfect. And this is us admitting that and doing what we can nonetheless. There's people who are always the, the negative people. They talk about anything we do. Like, you know, they'll, they'll see those and be like, well, what about their next meal? And it's like, okay, right. we're doing what we can. Yeah. We're doing what we can. You know, I had, when I first started doing this a couple of years ago, somebody said, uh, I made a post about it. And the first few times I did it, I didn't publicize it at all, you know. But the reason I started posting about it was for other people to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, do this shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not hard to do. And it makes you feel good to do something. So good. Else. We were giddy. We were like kids. Yeah, it was yeah. like, it was Christmas for us. Bro, we walked like three, four miles that night, you know, after a long day of preparing the shit and traveling and was fine and still took everybody, you know, and fed everybody, like the people that came to help us and hung out with them all night. So about two, three in the morning. So we were good. So uh, the reason I, I was publicizing it was for other people to to put them on notice so they could do it too. You know what I'm saying? And the coolest shit was this. All right, so I go to Australia, right? A kid reached out to do some video work for me while I was there. Um, you know, I had my assistant, Ray, like vet him out, see what his work looked like. He said, this guy's good. I was like, all right, cool. So met up with him. This kid was a good kid, an awesome kid, right? Little do I know, Maybe the second or third day I was there, he told me that, you know, you really inspired me when you was out feeding people. So I, I started doing it, too. He had a YouTube video of him doing it, a few of them of him doing it himself. Like he would get like boxes of pizza and go give them out. And I thought it was so fucking cool. Like, what are the odds of this kid? Me, me. You know, when I when I put it out that I'm going somewhere in a different country or something, and I need a videographer or whatever. It's a lot of emails go through. I happen to see his. His happened to be good enough. You know what I mean? And this guy happened to be someone who uh, was inspired by what we were doing to go out and do the same thing. And he had videos about it and everything. I thought it was so fucking cool. I know for a fact that in person, people's energies attract each other. For you know, sure. this this gut feeling. We yeah. know it's a real thing because yeah. we know that was that's a that's another second brain or arguably our first brain yeah, it was before the, first before brain. the yeah. primary brain uh, that we use today developed mm -hmm. after we started cooking our food. You can feel when people are good and people who are of a similar mindset attract each other. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why maybe that we came together mm -hmm. and that's why all the people in Houston who came out, the dozens of people who came to, to help, that's why they showed up. And you didn't get to talk to all of them. I didn't get to talk to all of them, but there was a, a, a small group that was with me and, you know, just asking them why they were there, what they liked about what we were doing. And they're all like, we, we feel the same way you do. We feel a desire to do something to help to level up and that's what we like about Mike Rashid you know because I, I asked this question because I, I get to you know we see each other every day so mm -hmm. to me it's just it's my life that we live now together mm -hmm. but for people they want more of you they want to know more they want to there's something alluring that that brings them towards you about your energy and so I'm always trying to identify because it's important for us in our communication so we can give them that mm -hmm. I'm asking them what do you what do you like about Mike Rashid what mm -hmm. is it just and let them tell me. I don't even give them. I don't right. say A, B, or C. Right. I let them tell me, and the answers are so wide in range. It's crazy. It blows me away. It's what, like what do they say? It, it's like because uh, I, I have no idea why the fuck people like me. Yeah, it's. I'm like, why do you like me? Oh, I like how he is into so much different stuff. I mm. like that. Uh, people were mentioning. I like how he, he makes videos about. Um, the chiropractic stuff now, like how he talks about rehabilitation and movement and therapy. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting to me. Oh, I like how he does the mental jewels. Mm -hmm. I like how he does the workouts and I like how he's a beast in the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, I like how he's uh, plant based and he's, he's willing to go against the grain. And I, I, 
I hear how wide the range is and I'm like, okay, we have to do everything. Right. We can't, we can't just be one thing right? because but we, we're not designed like that to be one thing, but people saying, sometimes like want to angle you into one thing that, yeah, that you, you're this fine, guy. But that's okay. So you, you name like four or five different things, right? So these people can only like me for that. That's okay. Cause you got that. It's there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can just skip the video that you're not into or, or the content you're not into if I'm not talking about your thing right now. But we that's just how we are. We're dynamic thinkers. You know what I mean? That's that, that's what makes life so interesting and fun. You know what I mean? I think that means we're being authentic because we're yeah, going sure. we're going where life takes us. Exactly. And where, wherever you are in that moment in your journey, that's what you're sharing. You're not even trying to curate it and give people only this one image of you. You're letting them learn with you and we're exposing them to all the knowledge that we encounter and experiences that we have. That's what's really important. I think that's what people love. Whatever you're doing, they they want to know about it because they're looking for you to be a conduit of all things good mm-hmm. to provide that to them, to, to right. share that with them as a thought leader. I think that's really where you've grown to be is a thought leader in the space where people want to know what you think so mm-hmm. that they can consider, do I think that too? They want to look to you to be the igniter of that. So you got a responsibility so, yeah, on I, that. And, I, and I, I take that very serious. And I am the first to tell these motherfuckers that I am not a, a, an expert at this shit. The shit that I care to put out is shit that I've stumbled upon in my life that kind of worked for me. You know what I mean? And I'm very clear about that to them. You know, um, When I got into supplements, I had no background in nutrition or science or chemistry, you know what I mean? But I was always interested in all of them, you know? So what did I do? I used my my hard drive of a brain, my phone, and Googled the fuck out of ingredients every night after work, you know what I mean? So it's like, there's a lot of things. We have information at our disposal, you know? But as we stay on certain paths, like we met for a reason, bro, you know what I'm saying? So uh, when we came... Like, I remember when we first came around each other, I didn't know who you were. I didn't even know who Mark was. To be honest, I had no idea who Mark was. When he reached out, I was like, I don't know this guy. You know, because I never paid attention to, I'm just, I guess, kind of new to the industry in the sense that I didn't pay attention to, I I didn't give a fuck about the industry. You know what I'm saying? Fitness industry. At that time, it was even, I mean, I'm talking about it nostalgically. It was five years ago. Right. At that time, it wasn't what it is right now. It wasn't, but yeah. it was a thing. And oh, it was, and it was growing world. fast. Yeah. yeah. See, I didn't know anybody, bro. It's, it's crazy. There's, it's, bro, shout out to Christian Guzman, dope ass dude. I remember the first time I met him, I didn't know who he was. He was like, what's up, Mike? Nice to meet you, man. You got good content. Christian. I'm like, okay. I'm looking at it. I don't know who you are, but okay. Thank you. <laughs> but he's a dope ass dude. I'm a fan of his now, you know? Um, but I just happen to not know any anybody you know what i mean um when i was on youtube the shit that i was looking up was like shit that i needed you know what i'm saying how can i figure this out fix my tv like i love youtube but the videos that i would watch to gra- gravitate to for my little motivation was i mean it was people around me it was ct big rob like we were with each other but outside of that it was like ronnie coleman his squat video and branch warren and johnny jackson the motherfuckers had me fired up Especially on leg day, you know what I mean? Because leg day is hard, so it's like it's a war. It's like getting ready for fucking war. I gotta watch this shit, mm-hmm. and I would literally watch that shit, and that was it. There was no other fitness videos or any of that shit because I would see them every now and then, and it would be boring as shit. There's no music. They're walking slow. They're, you know, you gotta retract your scapula, and I'm like, what the? What's the fuck is a scapula? You know what I'm saying? And and I've never been into that kind of stuff. Even when I was a trainer, man, like. You know, and I got my certifications and, you know, I educated myself on what I was doing. But I noticed a lot of people were, a lot of trainers would try to talk over people's heads to keep them insecure and they, like they need them. And I was like, I always disagree with that. I try to give them the information as plain and clear as possible so that they learn it and they understand it. That in turn made me successful and made these guys that I'm thinking about not successful in the craft and the, in the, uh, that feel the ability to know everything and yet express the most minimalist form of it. I think that's super powerful. That's, that's new to grass Tyson. Yeah. To take something as complex as the fucking, the cosmos. Yeah. Astrophysics, astrophysics and explain it to where a child understands. That's the true, that's wisdom and understanding. Knowledge is whatever is bullshit. It's just information. Anybody can memorize whatever 
and recite it and seem cool. No, 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 no. Explain that to me. And I think just to wrap it up on the on the what Mike Rashid is to people, I think that's really the essence of it is that what you've done, whether you meant to or not, is take people on a journey with you rather than trying to like fabricate it. It's just wherever you were, they are with you. They're going through it with you. I think a lot of uh, people who are influential in our, our space, they try and fabricate it. They try and fake it to go along with what's there. Either they, they focus on being a victim to what's currently popular and going with it and kind of making their own version of it, or they completely fake everything and none of it is real. Like maybe they, they think they need to be the strongest, so they use fake weights, or they think that everyone needs to talk about what's, what's the drama right now, so they make videos about what's the drama right now. But you've just been on a journey. The whole time that I've known you, you've been trying to consistently level up and grow and evolve, and that's directed your content. Whether it was talking about being vegan or, or being plant-based or how you could build muscle, maintain that with that type of approach, how you could engineer supplements just through testing in your own kitchen, figuring it out, how you can make an impact in your community, how you can push yourself in your mind with your training, whatever it is, you're just you're letting them be there with you and you have the raw intangible thing that we can't really define, which brings people to you. And so that's why I think you've had the staying power. And that's why I think we continue to grow and we're going to keep growing even just on the, on the personal level with the, with the YouTube and the ability to reach people. Cause we're, we're being genuine with the content now, dirty angels. I want to go back to that because we have a track record of making shit happen. When we put our heads together, we, everyone who's done alpha shred shout out everyone. It's the middle of season six right now. It's the heat of it. Uh, we're about a quarter of the way through right now. People are getting great results already. Um, that's our transformation challenge we do. Everyone who's in that and the thousands of people who've already done it, if you've benefited from it, if it's helped you change your life, I want you to know we created it based on a weekend trip where, we, where the idea sparked and we were like, let's go. Pedal to the metal. Let's not stop till we have something. The day that we, to add on to what Sean is saying, the day that we got the idea to do, to do it is the day that we start working on it. Yeah. And that's how I want you guys to take away from this. If you got an idea, if you got something, it's so easy to put up all the barriers to why you can't do it. But instead, just start doing what you can do right now. And for us, that was sketching out all the details of it and all the things we would need to have. Rather than looking at them all as barriers, we looked at them all as opportunities and just items we needed to build. So we laid out our list and we started attacking it. And a month later, we launched the, the sign up for the first challenge. We literally every single day for a month worked on it until it was live. Mm -hmm. And I want to do the same thing. I want to put us on the spot in this podcast and create a sense of urgency for Dirty Angels. Done deal. Because here's Just why. Done. What we did that night in Houston and what you've done before and what I've done in my own way uh, in other efforts too, we need to systemize that and we need to make it so people can get involved. Mm -hmm. And Dirty Angels is the perfect name for that. And it's got the vibe and the energy already, so it's going to work. Let me tell you how life works, man, how crazy life is, bro. Um, Sean does a lot of you know, charitable things, especially with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and these things like that. I wanted to... I remember uh, a few years ago, um, I just wanted to tell you, like, fuck, come with me. Come out here. But it just had to be the right time, the right circumstances, the right situations. You know what I mean? Like, you know your shit. I got a lot of fucking respect for you, bro, on a lot of things. But there's certain things that I really know. You know what I mean? I knew that once I got you out there, you was going to fall in love with that shit. I knew it. It just happened to work out on a trip to Houston. You know what I'm saying? On a, a business trip of ours, you know? So... You know, even with training, bro, we would, I remember times we'd be training or whatever, and you would kind of do your thing, I'd do my thing, and I'm like, man, I just wanted to do this, but I didn't want to be pushy with you, you know what I'm saying? Because I know what you're going to feel, and you're going to be hooked, you know what I mean? Certain things I know, you know, it's always, it's about finding a right, letting it happen when it's supposed to happen. Even with, with our business relationship, we didn't force or run into anything, you know, uh, it happens when it's supposed to happen, you know? So it's something to that, you know what I mean? And um, I love, that's, I love that about life. You know yeah, what I mean? I if, love you, if you put yourself in the right spot, a lot of people will, will look at me and say, how did you get 
any level of success. Like you're not the biggest guy. You're not the most shredded guy. Um, you're not even the most, you know, I have an education in nutrition. I went to school for it. Um, I studied this and I've continued that education and I, I care about it a lot. I'm always researching it, but there's more educated people. Maybe, mm-hmm. um, you're not the most anything. How did you do this? And I think it's just like how water will wear away rock. I'm always there. I'm, I'm always trying mm-hmm. and I'm never stopping. Mm-hmm. So just being relentless and continuing to apply effort has gotten me here. So just being in the right spot, including, like you said, I was at that gym that day. I didn't have to be at that gym uh, when you met Mark. Mm-hmm. I, I came. I just came because I was like, let me just come and see who I can meet, what I can do, and what value I can create. So just being there and being in that moment. We tell people, come on, just, just come because you never know. You may just stand around, but you'll learn something if your eyes and ears and mind are open. Mm-hmm. And so um, in this trip, I learned and I saw the power of, of people wanting to get involved in something uh, with this Dirty Angels movement. And I think we can, starting here, you know, in our very own city of Costa Mesa, where our business is located, where we're sitting right now today, we have a problem with homelessness here. We actually do. It's a big issue. Um, and there are organizations we can team up with as Dirty Angels, and we can get people from all over LA to come in. We can do things like we've in the past helped paint a home uh, and renovate a home that was going to be, uh, the, the lady who lived in it was an old woman who couldn't do this work herself, and it was a trailer park. And so if you don't do certain upkeep stuff, they'll kick you out. Mm. And if they kicked her out, she was gonna be homeless. She had right. no family yeah. and no money. So she would just go to the streets, and that's how some people become homeless like that. It's not all just drug using, up, loser, yeah. you know, vagrants. Sometimes right. people are in a circumstance and then they get put there and then they can't get out of it because they're stuck. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's a lot of education that could be done, and we'll save that for another podcast. But people don't understand that homelessness is much deeper than just being lazy or addicted to drugs. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to it. It's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. And man. we can we can make an impact starting right here. So I wanna we, I wanna challenge we, us. We do need to start here, but yeah. we need to get it all the way out to LA. I want it, I want so it bad I want it to be everywhere where we can be doing it. I wanna mm-hmm. at minimum commit with you right now to doing one one Dirty Angels uh, meetup, event, whatever we want to call it, uh, output of effort each month for the rest of the year. Done. Let's do that. Let's Done. let's let's shake on that right now. It's look, it is uh it is as we speak, it's the middle of July. Mm-hmm. We did one for July. We can do August, September, October, November, Stay December. No we can do one a month. And if we do that, we'll have matched what we've done previously before already in the mm-hmm. end of this year. Yeah. And I, I imagine if we give the, if we create the ability for people to do it, other people will want to orchestrate Dirty Angels events uh, or outreach community uh, efforts in other places where we won't even be. Mm-hmm. I want to be at all of them. But they'll do. Yeah, that's that's the goal. That's yeah. what we should do. We got to mobilize people all over the country, all over the world. So we're gonna we're gonna start this nonprofit. Done. We're, we're gonna start this Done. nonprofit today, guys. Uh, as I pro- as we sit here right now, I don't know when you're gonna hear this, but it's Thursday, July 18th. We will start this nonprofit today. And when we say nonprofit, we mean that everything that we can get together for this, if it's sponsorships or our own money, whatever it is. It's going to be utilized for for the benefit of this uh, desire to help communities, not just here in Costa Mesa or even L.A., but wherever. wherever. And I got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, Trifecta came through Clutch and provided the huge. meals. Uh, huge. They provided man. the meals for us for the Houston event. So they, they provided uh, protein sources and, and snacks and the whole nine. Shipped it next day air. It was very expensive to do. But, you know, uh, Greg Connolly and the team, a trifecta, we appreciate it. They have big hearts over there. Big they hearts, they big actually hearts. are just like how we talk about you move in silence, you know. Yeah. When the time comes, you'll be judged for your effort. Sure. People who are close to you, the people who are in your life are going to know. And then the world will find out when it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. And right now, I don't know how much trifecta publicizes this, but when we were talking to Greg last week, he told us, they nice. actually every week are doing this. Right. They're donating all the food that they can to local facilities to be able to distribute them to those communities. And this is something that they don't post about. Yeah, they don't they don't it's use this for publicity. Yeah. They just use this because they're like, okay, uh, we have leftover food every single week. We may as well get this to the right people. And that takes effort actually and it costs money to manage that, to make sure that they get it because you still have to make sure it's safe for them to eat. It gets there on time. It's temperature controlled right. that they get it. This And it just, it's mind share. So I understand even planning this event, 
what the this last weekend for us this meetup you know for the people who showed up and helped us out we we needed their time and a lot of them brought waters and things mm-hmm. like that which was amazing of them because we didn't even ask them to but uh, it was very stressful like to we had to make sure we were there on time we right. were running around the city of Houston oh my God. trying to traffic. buy up oh, oh the traffic is a nightmare Jeez. we literally bought all the buns in the all Walmart the yeah people were and trying to get up. I had to fight I had to fight an old lady to get a bag she didn't get any hey I was going to help her out for a minute, yeah. but she was holding her own. Yeah, she bread. almost, yeah, I, I almost didn't get the bread. So we, we bought all the buns, all the ketchup, all the Gatorades. So we, you know, we were stressed out trying to get this done. Mm-hmm. So I understand that Trifecta is doing all this each week and they're not even talking about it. Right. But Which is, which is to be commended. That's cool. We're proud of them. We'll talk about it. So exactly. um, we're glad and that we they. we only align ourselves with businesses and companies. Look, all money ain't good money. I don't give a fuck. I'll walk away from anything. But I am proud of my alliances in this business, you know, because I only do business with people that I like, good people, people that I think are are legit. I've in the past, I've gotten into business kind of blindly before uh, against that gut feeling. I'll never do that again. Never do it again. So anybody I'm affiliated with now, yes, always having to be really good people, you know, and and Greg and uh, Trifecta is legit people. And we've we've done a lot of uh, work for charitable uh, or humanitarian efforts before, but never, as, to my knowledge, we haven't done anything formal like this in terms of starting a new venture for it. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have a lot to learn. You guys are going to learn with us, but we are going to do a, a nonprofit organization for this to be able to uh, monitor and house the efforts of it. It's already set up, bro. I didn't tell you that. It's set up. Oh, you've got the 501? It, uh, it's set up. Okay. It's set up. So, so we've even got that already going. Yeah. So we're going to be learning a lot as we start operating it and and getting it funded and having things go. And, you know, we're doing all this out of pocket. Usually we're just figuring it out as we go Mm -hmm. uh, and and giving it whatever gas it needs just from our own wallet. But um, having it to be able to grow further than what we can do ourselves, it's going to require, you know, it's going to require all of you, everyone to help us with that. And we're excited because whoever comes forward uh, to to join with us, like the people did in Houston, it's going to be amazing people. For sure. For sure. So check it out. Let's um I want to kind of wrap it up. I want to assure you guys that you're still going to get all the other content, the training and all of the shit that you're used to on the channel, but you're going to be getting a lot of lions, owls and elephants, all right? A lot of it, you know. We do have a lot of guests lined up, professional athletes, boxers, entertainers, law enforcement, just cool people all around the board. We're going to this is a, a table for discussion. For, for dialogue, for communication, exchanging ideas, gaining understanding, shit like that, talking shit, bagging on people, all of that shit, You're getting it all. And um, I'm really happy about the new beginning for the, for the, for the podcast. It's going to be cool. It's going to be some amazing conversations and Listen, thoughts shared in here. Me and Sean be in here talking about some crazy shit. We be going on odysseys as if we fucked up and we're not, you know what I mean? So y'all going to get to hear a lot of that, you know? We never had the cameras on when we're talking about the shit. No, but now we got to be like, wait, 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 turn on the camera. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. We just got to come in here and flip on the switch. Yep. It's perfect. Cool. All right, so we out of here. Like, subscribe, share, all of that stuff. Um, we hit a million. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Let's get, let's get to two million, all right? We want to get this information out to as many people as possible. We'll see you guys on the next one. Latest. Cool. I, I just didn't want us to keep talking about us. Yeah, we would have, yeah. yeah.